So what am I talking on? Energy efficient building design. Um, and I wanted to focus on the two main streams of that. A couple of interesting quick stats. Um, the building industry creates around 40% of the global emissions, which is massive, as you can see. Um, and about, uh, let's say, a quarter, three quarters of that is in the actual operation of the, the building. So that, you know, the energy that's used to heat and cool it and all the other things. And then about a quarter of it is in the actual construction of the building. So the embodied energy and the materials and waste and all that sort of thing. So you can see that if you look at that, how, how we use our buildings is around 30% of the world's emissions, which is just such a large number. So, yeah, absolutely. So we, th there's two main streams for uh, designing, de designing an NF energy efficient building or home, and that's passive solar design and passive house. So we're gonna, I'm gonna unpack those for us today. And I've also got a, a 10 points on, um, Melinda mentioned it, on how to protect trees when we build. So I've broken into five, five and 10 quick bullet points. We'll race through it pretty quick. But uh, I love the number five. So it's all, all nice and neat. Um, so passive solar design um, on that video, and it's probably a good way to do it is anecdotally. Um, it can vary a bit depending on how well you do passive solar design, but I think the gentleman on the video said, yeah, my friends, compared to my friends, I save a lot of energy. And I think, yes, you will save energy. It's hard to quantify it down to an actual number, so I haven't quite done that. It's, it can be some to a lot for passive solar design. Passive solar design. Passive house, however, is a system where everything is measurable and they actually put exact numbers on it. It is a German-based um, system that was uh, originated in around 1990. And uh, so it's an interesting way to look at it. So that's, that's actually measurable. So passive solar design, the five keys. So firstly, and most importantly, is orientation. That was also mentioned in the video that the, the north is, you know, if you can get your living areas and bedrooms, if possible, facing north, that is fantastic. Um, and one of the points here is some blocks are tricky, but there are with good design you can overcome even tricky blocks to get to get northern access into into rooms. It can be done. Um, so obviously, having sun come in is uh, orientate orientating the building the right way is very important. But then also you're planting around the building because if you plant a lot of evergreens close to your building, you're going to block solar as access. So thinking about your landscaping as well as the building design is absolutely crucial. And they're really integrated to, 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 uh, to make a building perform really well. So that's quite exciting. So it's not just about the building, it's about the outside and they're, they're sort of hand in hand. So secondly, is you know, the sh how you shade the windows north, east, west, even south. Um, is crucial to passive solar design and um, you can just see if that's north on the left the sun is high in summer low in winter we probably all know that east and west you've got issues because it comes in low uh, low altitude so you've got to deal with that and there's various techniques that you can do that with thirdly insulation we all think that's probably a no-brainer but if you're in a 1950s building like me and Keith are in Coolbalup if you cracked open the timber frame, there's no insulation in the walls. So, you know, it's, uh, although it's obvious today, it wasn't always there. And uh, now we're being asked to put in more and more insulation, which is probably a good thing um, to achieve higher and higher stars. It doesn't really cost a lot extra to get better insulation. So it's a good investment insulation. Thermal mass has also already been mentioned today, and that's basically heavy, dense material storing heat within them and then radiating it out or in summer it stores cool because <laughs> if, uh, if your concrete slab is cooler than outside it's going to absorb heat so it's a great evener of temperature and it's um it's a really key part of uh passive solar design and fifthly also been mentioned is cross ventilation where you've got yeah openings at either side of the room that allow allow for ventilation through and our key areas are really obviously 
um, southwest during the day. And at night, in summer, there are some beautiful breezes from the southeast. And I had a bedroom once that had a, a window facing there. It was like air conditioning through the middle of those nights. And I thought, wow, it's amazing what our, the environment has to offer. If you just think of these things when you're designing it, it's such a joy to have those things in your home. So there are the five, just a couple of quick looks. That was my own house I did in Hilton. I did a, a pergola out the front. I had a shade cloth on it. Very simple, just put it on in summer, took it off in winter until the deciduous tree grew big enough. And, and um, eaves up the top there, that was all north facing. That was a tricky backyard block. I noticed one of these had that issue and I had that issue on that block, but was able to overcome those issues with good design. And my sister's house, again, deciduous trees, nice big eaves, north facing. It's, it's a fairly simple, simple formula, but it's, it's just wonderful uh, that it works so well. Uh, this is a design I did recently. I was given a, a, a someone came along with that design. North is actually on the 45, again, a tricky orientation. And I actually, this one really made me think quite hard because it, you know, I couldn't orient all the house at 45, but what I did is kept my, a, a fair bit of it you know, 90 degrees to the street, but with the living areas, I tilted them and actually created this wonderful sort of north facing space and using some of the setback in the front yard and, and also reduced the room that they weren't going to use, which Chris, Chris mentioned earlier. And suddenly from there where there's no real outside beautiful green space, now they've got this, you know, an alfresco within this lovely park type front yard so that was a, and they they're just ecstatic this client because it's really transformed what they even thought they could have so that's a good example of going from one to the other so passive house um, there's a couple of stats there it's it's probably a lot to get our head around but um, the main thing is it gives a, a, a low amount of energy to keep the house comfortable which comfort is defined as 20 to 25 degrees Celsius, 90% of the time, and it says that it's gonna be a very low amount of energy. So Passive House says that wherever you build a house, anywhere in the world, whether it's Antarctica or the, or the Simpson Desert, you will achieve that same standard. So that's what Passive House means. So the five keys of Passive House. So it has a, Perth's actually, relatively easy to achieve passive house and actually probably the one, one of the most affordable places in the world to build a passive house place because you actually don't have to, you can get away with a standard wall frame and insulation and still achieve that level. It does cost more because there are a few other things but it's actually very affordable to do in Perth. Um, you do need to upgrade to thermally broken double glazed windows um, or, or a UPVC window. Um, we think double glazing in Perth is high tech. In Europe, it's considered low tech. They only have triple glazing there. So it's all about, you know, perception, isn't it? Um, thirdly, air tightness. Um, Passive House is very big on making sure we're not losing energy in all the gaps in the house. And they use these fantastic membranes that both don't allow air to escape and also but allow air to um, to permeate so it's vapor permeable so it actually deals with uh, mo moisture in the air humidity very well so passive house are very healthy in that sense they they make sure there's no mold problems or humidity problems through these um, intelligent membranes and fifth sorry fourth the uh, passive house doesn't want the um, energy to escape from inside to out with bridges like steel. They won't allow a steel beam, say, to go from inside to the outside of the house because it's just a highway for energy. So Passive House looks at those sort of things. And fifth and final, Passive House, because um, the house, the idea is the house is well sealed to not lose and gain energy. And it, um, it compensates that by having a, a heat exchange system, which is actually giving you a very gentle amount of fresh, pure air continually into the house. There's an argument this is overkill in Perth, um, but some people might like this idea because of allergies, some of our air, actually we have some, believe it or not, some of the, not the greatest air in Perth, 
compared to other places due to several factors. So it's actually, you know, it's something worth considering if, if pure, you know, if really good quality air is your thing. And that's, uh, that's just a summary of those five there. So that's, um, so Keith touched on this. So who is, who's going to win this battle? Passive house versus passive solar design. You've got your, because it's all your tubes over there in your ceiling that give you all the fresh air. You've got your thermal mass over here on the right, which is what characterizes um, passive solar design. And I just asked the question to answer that, that question is how green is enough green? And that's for you to answer for yourself. So I'm not going to answer what's better. It's up, it's up to you to uh, answer which one, you know, the pros and cons of either of those. I think they're both great. If you do either of these, you are really doing, you're in the very, you're at the very top of quality of home. So they're both fantastic and I can't see the point of really arguing over which is better. But if you, but if you're in, if you have allergies, obviously passive house would be wonderful. So let's move on to the top 10 tips of tree friendly building design. Um, number one, when, they, when we look at a tree and, and look at protecting the root zones, they, they do have, um, there's calculations to give you basically the diameter of the tree. There's two specific zones that are worked out through using the radius of the, the trunk of the tree at, at certain points. That's very, these, uh, are accessible on the internet, these sort of calculations. They're not really that difficult, but they tell you what sort of area under and around the tree, each individual tree, what we need to be looking out for when we build. So number two, um, obviously, if you've got a beautiful, um, appropriate tree, it's got to be said that not every tree you necessarily keep that points being made. I think that's really important because I think sometimes people think, you know, that you know, the greenies go too far sometimes, um, but it, it is about being appropriate. It does have to work in build up areas. But if you have got, you know, a superb tree that you want to keep, obviously if you don't think about it, it could be d taken out very quickly and just some great, you know, working out where your boundaries are going to go is the first step. Um, same, same to go with the building footprint. If you've got an individual block, maybe you could think about doing a two-story smaller home rather than a larger single-story home that just takes that tree out. There's a cost implication there, but a tree, trees are valued. Some uh, metrics put them at in the tens of thousands of dollars, maybe up to you know, $80,000 of the value of a 50 to 60 year old tree. So there's a lot of even numeric value in trees. We've spoken about arborist. If uh, more than 10% of the proposed building is within the um, tree pr protection zone, then a arborist is recommended to consult with. Absolutely brilliant idea. Um, how we cut and fill blocks is very important. Obviously, a lot of blocks in Perth, um, are, 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 are we st generally just flatten blocks or build retaining everywhere to make sure they're flat. But you can build, in, build buildings other way, having some on stumps and some on concrete and, and retain a tree. So again, it's not rocket science, but it just takes a little bit of thought. Being considerate to our neighbours when we're building, they might have a tree near a boundary. Obviously, you know, let's think about our neighbours as well. And I mean, in a way, they're your trees, your neighbours' trees, because you'll be looking at them. And in fact, it's, you know, one of our biggest assets is what our neighbours have done. The next one is when we do our sewer trenches, Obviously, away from tree root zones is really important, but if they have to be near, you can be careful, dig a trench, and we did this with, with Chris's development. Any roots that were sort of any size that or bigger, we protected. So we asked the, you know, the, the, the plumbers as they were digging it to, to protect the, the main tree roots. So a little bit of care for a big gun. Again, just good, good solid thinking. Also, you do see... Um, tree protection, and most of them I've seen are not really adequate. You see a tiny little thing about a metre square around a tree. That's probably not good. All that's going to do is protect the trunk a little bit, but the actual root zone is what we're trying to protect. And very seldom is this done properly. It might be something that the city might think about, you know, working on as well 
is is making sure that there's a you know that the builders really need to do this properly i think that's probably something that you know gets missed out 99 percent of the time um footing snare trees i have touched on this you can do lightweight um, timber stump, you know, stumps rather than concrete uh, for the obvious reasons, nutrients and water to the tree root zones. And lastly, the um, permeable surfaces near, near uh, root zones. I mean, you want to avoid concrete, but there's a raft of other fantastic um, alternatives that can be used that are really nice solutions to live around that also, you know, allow our magnificent trees to survive. So I love the way a lot of this is pretty basic, but it can, it can transform the, you know, the environments that we live in. Wow, what an exciting time to be building because there's so much that we can achieve and create through environmentally sustainable design, otherwise known as the ESD process. And this promises to lift the outcomes and the standards of our builds. Now, it's important to know that as a potential developer, the planning approval process has changed to accommodate this new ESD process. So there are a few more steps for you to take. You will need to provide a completed description of the ESD features of your build. You know, all those cool things that you do to make the building more efficient, sustainable and comfortable to live in. The city has prepared a DIY template to assist you to identify these features in your build. Then you'll need to do an ESD performance report to show exactly how well those additions will work to keep your home naturally comfortable throughout the year. Now you can DIY this process using a rapid LCA assessment app, which is available through the City of Vincent website. Now, if that all seems a bit tricky, there are professionals in this space that can do a report for you and give you recommendations. Even though the city is not affiliated with any assessors, they do have a list of providers that you can draw from. And because they're experienced in this space, they can help you get over a range of really tricky issues like building on a tight budget, or getting a good outcome off a small, crammed, or even an awkward block. It's important to stress that this isn't an overly arduous process and that the city planners are actually there to help usher in this new and exciting standard for development in the city of Vincent. Now you can make a booking to talk to one of the team and run through the steps and they can highlight some of the sticking points and how to address them. All of which can make a huge difference to your planning approval experience and outcomes. Tell us a little bit about this space, what sure. we have here. Yeah. yeah, so it's a 208 square meter lot. It's a actually, tiny block. Yeah, carved off a larger block that's actually owned by the neighbor next door. Mm -hmm. We're planning a much bigger renovation. Um, my client saw the block come up. Uh, they attended some of the talks that were happening at the mm -hmm. city of Vincent. Mm -hmm. And that's how they found out about wanting to design a more eco-effective, more sustainable home. Uh, so we've got a seven star rated home, mm -hmm. uh, relatively small footprint, 170 square meters, single car garage. Mm -hmm and uh, we've oriented the house in order to maximise the northern orientation towards the rear. And Sid, as an architect, these new policies from the City of Vincent, they're really making your job easier and giving you a better quality product, aren't they? Often when we approach energy efficiency and trying to build more sustainably, we think of it as a bit of an afterthought. Mm. And if you take that kind of approach, then you make bad design decisions that then make it harder to get a more sustainable outcome. And then it ends up costing more yeah, because you yeah, have to add course. stuff in order to make it comply. So it's great when councils like the City of Vincent are incorporating sustainable design as part of their planning and built form policy. And that way you can think about it from the very beginning. In our final video, we will explore how we can bring the LCA and the ESD process together to create some truly remarkable outcomes that will lift the value and even the marketability of your investment. It's exciting stuff. All the information you need on developing differently and creating your own inspired infill is on the City of Vincent website.